Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be here this Sunday. I'm lovely particularly to see all the youngsters. It's a service that we use, it's good that you're here this morning. Um, and we ask that the Lord bless us as we spend time together. So Psalm 139 starts like this. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee? I flee from your presence. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your right hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for, for darkness is as light with you. So there is God, and he says, look, I know you. I know all about you. There's nothing that I don't know. Uh, and that's both a good thing, isn't it? Because it's wonderful to know that God knows us, but also it can feel a little bit intimidating because there are things that we can't hide from God. There's literally nothing that we can do or say that God doesn't know. And that means that sometimes when we do wrong things, God knows about those as well. But isn't it good that we know uh, the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we can ask him for his grace because we're coming before a holy God, we're coming before a God uh, to whom we must give account. So we're going to sing, we're going to sing two songs. Um, we've got uh, this. this Is the Day um, by City of Light, and then we've got Psalm 23. So we'll stand up and praise God's name as we sing those two songs together. <laughs>
and uh, verses 15 and 16. So Ezekiel 34 and verses 15 and 16. Just to give you a bit of a background, God is quite cross with the leaders in Israel at that time. They've not been doing what they should do. Um, and this is what God promises that in the future he will do. Okay, this is what he says. He says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. So there you go, that's God's word for us this morning, and we're going to look at that in just a little while of time. Uh, but before that, we're going to come to the Lord in prayer, so let's pray. Sure. So loving Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we want to thank you that you are a God that we can trust. We thank you that as we look at this world around us, and we look at all the problems and, and the struggles and the hardship, uh, we thank you that we can come to you, the God who knows all about us, and who sees what we need. And so Lord, this morning we would come and we would ask for those today who are struggling because uh, they are caught up in war. We think of those in the Ukraine, Lord, and bring them to you. We ask, Lord, for your hand to be upon them. We think particularly of uh, those families who have lost their homes. We think of some of the children who have lost their parents. We think of the very difficult situation that they face day after day. But we thank you that you are the God who sees them, who knows them, and is at work to help them in many ways. We thank you and praise you for that. We thank you and praise you that we have heard that the good news about Jesus is going far and wide in that country. We thank you for that. We thank you that people are telling the soldiers all about the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that uh, the gospel is being taken by those who know the Lord Jesus, who used to live in Ukraine, into other countries and being shared there as well. We praise you that you're a God who knows all of these things, and he's able to bring good out of the band. So we just pray and praise you for that this morning. We ask that you would help us today. Give us the ears to hear what you would say to us. Lord, we're so busy with all sorts of different things in our lives, and we ask that you would help us to, uh, instead of being distracted by them, to have ears to hear what you have to say to us this morning. Please we pray, speak into our lives. We pray that you would help us to understand how much we need Jesus as our Saviour today. Father, we pray for the other churches that will be meeting together all across this country. We ask that you would be with them. I pray for my own church back in New Milton and pray and ask that you would speak powerfully there today. I ask, Lord, that you would bring people to know the Lord Jesus Christ and that you would uh, strengthen and encourage your people. Lord, what we need in this country is that you would work in all of your people's lives and, Lord, that you would revive them that you would bring them to that place where they want to serve you and give their lives to you. And Lord, we pray, because you are working in your people, we pray also that that gospel message would go into the world, uh, go into our country, and that many people would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you are able to do this, Lord. We thank you that you are able to do uh, even more than we ask or imagine. And so we praise you for that. We pray Lord, that you can help the youngsters um, in a moment as they come and do their uh, various songs and taking part, Lord, and, and reading to us. We ask that we would, uh, well, they would be encouraged and that we would know uh, what it is to see you at work in these youngsters' lives. Father, we thank you for all of these things. We pray Lord, that you would be at work in this church here. We ask Lord, that you would add to uh, their number here those that you are saving. And so we pray that there would be, um, Lord, opportunities to speak of Jesus in the we pray that this church here would grow and uh, would grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask you for his glory and the praise. Amen. So we're going to sing another song, um, which is Surely Goodness and Mercy. That's another one based on Psalm 23. And then the youngsters are going to come up and uh, share their bits after that. So I'll hand over to whoever's leading that. So let's stand and praise God's word. Oh, 
think about um, Ezekiel chapter 34 and verses 15 and 16 in just a second, but before we do that, we're going to pray. So let's pray, shall we? So, Heavenly Father, as we look at uh, your word this morning, we ask that you can help us to understand it, and we ask too that you can help us by your spirit to apply it to our lives. Father, we pray that we might be those that respond in faith to Jesus. In his name we ask. Amen. So here's a question for you younger ones, right? Here's a question. Have you ever asked someone to do something, maybe you've asked a brother or a sister to do something for you, and they've messed it up? They've done it wrong. Have you ever had that? Oh, your point. It's just, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, okay, so you've, you've given them this job, and they've gone away and they've done it, and they've messed it up, and it's gone wrong. And um, that's quite bad. But they might not meant to do it. They might have, um, um, well, they might have accidentally done it wrong. Have you ever had someone that you've asked to do something for you, and they have deliberately messed it up because they didn't want to do it? Yeah? Yeah? It's happened to me as well, yeah. It often happens when I ask my children to do something I've noticed that whenever I ask them to do it, they don't want to do it. So they stand their feet and say no, and then I have to get across and make them do it. Which um, is not good. Um, but we can have that, can't we? We can have things that we want people to do, and they go away and they do it, or they don't do it, and sometimes they really just mess it up because they didn't want to do it in the first place. Well, in a way, that happens to God. He gave the people of Israel, so all those who, who lived in, in that uh, Old Testament time where Ezekiel was, he gave to the people um, leaders who were meant to do a job for him. They were meant to look after the people and to take care of them. They were to be like shepherds that looked after the sheep. Okay? So can you tell me the kinds of things that shepherds need to do? To look after sheep. Is it gone up? They need to feed them. That's quite a basic thing, isn't it? If you're a shepherd and you've got sheep, the, the basic understanding is that you're going to give them some food to eat. That would be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it, if you're a shepherd? What else might you do if you're a shepherd? Take them to a new pasture. So when they've eaten all the grass out of one and it's a little bit uh, short and, and not, not growing very well, you have to take them to a new one. So you have to look ahead and plan it. To defend them. So if there's something going to come and attack them, you need to be watching after them uh, and making sure that you keep them uh, away or keep the predators away. Yeah? Okay, anything else that a good shepherd might do? Give them water? Give them water, absolutely. Yes. Maybe give them food, dry old food that they've got to eat, and then there's nothing to drink. Um, we don't like that, do we? We like something to drink when we've got something to eat because it helps us to wash it down. So yeah, you need to provide them water. What else might you need? What else might you need to do if you're a good shepherd? What happens if one of them gets hurt? You get what you work to help them get back to that. Yeah, yeah, so you might dress their wound, or, or you might uh, give them medicine. Um, you might do all those kind of things in order that they might get better. Okay, so that's the sort of things that good shepherds do. What do bad shepherds do? Do you know what a bad shepherd does? Yeah, so he leaves them in the field where they've got no food, so he doesn't feed them. Yeah, anything else? What might a bad shepherd do? Okay, so when they get hurt, he just shrugs his shoulders and walks away. Yeah, it's not very nice, is it? Wouldn't be a very nice shepherd, would it? Yeah, so there are all sorts of things. So good shepherds do nice things, good things, and they protect their sheep. But bad shepherds ignore their sheep. They don't want anything to do with their sheep. And that's exactly what God says was going wrong with the leaders in Israel in all that time ago. So Ezekiel 34, verses 1 to 6, says this. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord, Are shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves? You should have been feeding the sheep. 
Uh, you eat the fat, you clothe yourself with wool, you slaughter the fat ones, you do not feed the sheep. The weak you do not strengthen, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the stray you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness that you have ruled over them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. They wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered all over the face of the earth, with none to search or to seek for them. So, God had put these leaders in place and they weren't doing what God had said. Now, God was upset. He wasn't surprised, though. You see, because God knows everything, doesn't he? He wasn't surprised about the sort of things that they'd been doing. But he was very sad about the way that they had been treating his people. So instead of helping the people to go to God for all that they need, the leaders were living for themselves. They were just living in the way that they wanted to. And they were ignoring all of the people. And they were growing fat on all of the things that uh, they could eat, but they weren't feeding the sheep. And they were stealing from God, from God and they were treating the people badly. Uh, you know, in the midst of all of that, you would think that God would get very cross with those um, shepherds. And in a sense, he is cross with them. But this is the promise that he makes, and we read the promise earlier, didn't we, in uh, verses 15 and 16. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them in justice. Now this verse tells us that God, as the good shepherd, will do four things. So I'll just see if you can remember these at the end and come and tell me what they are. So there are four things that the good shepherd does. So if you can come to the country at the end and tell me what those four things are. Did he, did he can manage that? Yeah? So listen carefully then. So the first one, first promise that God makes when he is shepherd, is he will make the sheep lay down. He will make the sheep lay down. Now that seems a strange thing, doesn't it? How many shepherds have you seen out in the field making sheep lay down? It's actually quite difficult to make sheep lay down. But why on earth would they not lie down? So, why do you lie down? To rest. Yeah, so, so sheep lie down to rest. What else, what, why else might you lie down? So it's about rest, but a little bit further. So you can sleep. So, so this verse is telling you that sheep need to rest and they need to go to sleep, but sometimes they won't want to. Why won't they want to rest and sleep? Because they haven't eaten up there, so they might be hungry bellies. They might need feeding. Yeah, that could be true. Yeah. Why else might sheep not want to rest? <coughs> Okay, so it's a rocky place and they're just not very comfortable to lay down. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Maybe they need to be moved on to another, another place by the shepherd, a good shepherd. Yeah. Scared, yeah, I think that's really what it's talking about. You see, sheep um, don't, uh, if a sheep feels threatened in any way, they will not lie or settle down. And so sometimes when I used to be a shepherd, and that's going back to when I used to be a shepherd and I'd go and see the sheep late at night when they normally should be laying down, if they were in any way worried, they'd all be uh, bunched up together, all stood up, all worried about what's going on. Because there's something prowling around that they're worried about. Um, just, um, Yeah, yeah, and they're all scared, and that's what they do. So they, they, I wouldn't want to be the sheep on the outside, because the sheep on the outside of the hut are the ones that are in the danger zone, but the ones on the roof are fairly protected, aren't they? Because they're all bunched up together to make sure that nobody can get them, yeah. So, this is what Jesus promises, because Jesus is the, is the good shepherd, you've been singing about that, haven't you? This is what Jesus promises, that when we trust in him, when we accept him as our shepherd, 
They will be asked for the forgiveness of our sin. And when we say to Jesus that we, we want you to come into our lives, not to be part of our lives, then as the Good Shepherd, he promises that we will always be able to find rest and we will always be eternally safe. And so he promises that in John chapter 14 and verse 27. When he's talking to his disciples, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let, your, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. <coughs> so today, if you want a good shepherd, if you want someone who's going to care for you, Jesus is that person. And he promises that when you go to him, that you will always be safe. Now, that doesn't mean that no troubles will come into your life. But what it does mean is that when you have troubles, you can always find peace and rest with Jesus. So he will help you in the midst of those troubles. Which is a good thing, isn't it? Okay, so let's remind ourselves of that first one then. So he will make the sheep lay down. Right, so that's number one. Number two, he will seek the lost and bring back those that stray. Okay, so he will seek the lost and bring back those that stray. If you remember, he will seek the lost. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. So why do sheep get lost and stray away from their flock? So why do you think the sheep go wandering off? What sort of reasons why a sheep want to go wandering away? Look for food, so he might be going away because he's seen something that he likes in the distance. It looks good to eat, so off he goes again. Yeah. Okay, so he might wander off because of that. Um, you might want to cut because something you can't go with. Um, a person might be like to get old and then you might want to go out. Okay, so he might be a bit bored, um, not being able to go very far, and he thinks he'd like to go for a, for a, a walk around the beach. <laughs> yeah, okay, good to do that, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes, she must in the very dark. If they might want to go fast, yeah, because they're good looking for something that they really like to buy the side of, yeah? What else might make them go? So they might be distracted, so they might be seeing something that, um, that they quite want and go wandering off looking for it. Uh, they might think that the grass is greener in a different field, so they might be wandering off of the grass. Uh, what else might they do? Oh, do you think do you think it's possible for sheep to be afraid of the shepherd? Yes. Yeah? Scary. Yeah, so shepherds can look scary, can't they? Yeah, so the sheep might think, well, that's a scary shepherd, I'm gone. Yeah? Yeah? So that might be true. Um, why else might they go? What, what else might happen? That would make a sheep go away from his flock. Yeah, so they do get scared and go away, yes? It's too crowded in the pen. It's too crowded in the pen, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're looking, looking for a better, a better place to live. Yeah. Distracted. So the Bible says that we should love God 
and that we should want to do what he wants us to do, instead we get distracted. We would rather play computer games than talk to God. Think that's true? Yeah? Yeah? Play on your pad or, or watch the television rather than talk to God. Mm -hmm. I can see here there's some and some. See, the thing is, we easily get distracted, don't we? We easily get pulled away because we want the things that we want. Okay, when we might think something's better. So, have you ever wished that you had the same things that your friends had? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to be honest. Yeah. You know, we, we often look at the things that others around us have got and we think, well, we want that. And so we go on. Through. Um, no, because me and my friends nearly had the exact Oh, okay, so you've you mentioned it out, there's no, there's no reason to be jealous of your brother and sister. Yeah, yeah well, I, I'm sure as you grow older, there'll still be some friends who've got things that you would really like, um, and then you'll go after them. Yeah, so, so other people have things, and we think it looks better, and so we want them instead. But do you think it's possible that we could be frightened of Jesus? Yeah? You think it's possible? So we might make up in our heads what we think Jesus is like. You know, that's a very dangerous thing to do. So instead of reading the Bible and understanding what Jesus is like, we might think in our heads that we know what Jesus is like and we convince ourselves he must be quite a mean shepherd. You know, we might think, well, you know, he'll spoil my fun. He'll make me do things that I don't want to do. We might be worried about the kind of shepherd that Jesus might be. So we might be frightened of the shepherd. We think... God is mean, so we run away. Or, someone might entice us. Now, it's not usually a person that entices us away from God. It's the person that the Bible calls the devil. So the devil convinces us that Jesus is a stick in the mud. He's going to ruin my fun. And what you really want to do is to have fun. You, know, you want to enjoy your life and have it get all your own way and not worry about anything. Else, and the devil convinces us that if we listen to him and not to Jesus, then we will be okay. But of course, that's a lie, isn't it? So how did Jesus come to seek and to save the lost? What did Jesus do that means that we who are lost can be found? He died on the cross, didn't he? Yeah. So on the cross, Jesus comes all the way from heaven, comes all the way down to earth, and, and he walks around just like us. He experiences all the things that we experience. Does all the things that we do, yet he never sinned, never did anything wrong. And we wish we were like that, don't we? You know, when Mum tells us that we should do something, there's something in us, isn't there, that says, I don't want to do it. And even if we do it just to keep Mum happy, sometimes that, that bit within us still is rebelling, still is saying, Well, you know, I'm doing it because I don't do it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not doing it because I want to do it. And you know, when it comes to God, we can be like that. God says that we should. Love him, and we say, Well, don't worry, not interested. I want to do things how I want to do them. And so we can disobey God in that way. And so Jesus comes and he goes to the cross, and on that cross, he's punished for our sin, for the things that we do wrong, for that wrong, rebellious attitude within us. Jesus suffers. And he suffers, well, he suffers the eternal punishment that our sin deserves. And so when we look at Jesus on the cross, we need to realise that he's coming to rescue us, he's coming to save us. Coming that we might have forgiveness of sin. Coming that we might know peace with God. So Luke tells us that very thing, it says, For the Son of Man, which is just another name for Jesus, came to sin and to save the lost. He came to rescue us. Okay, so we've had two. Do you remember what they are? The first one was... He makes sheep lie down, right? That's number one. Number two, what's the number two? He looks for the lost. Well done. Okay, number three then. He cares for those who struggle. He cares for those who struggle. So can you think of a difficult time in your life? So we all go through difficult times. Can you think of anything that you've been through that's been difficult recently? Sats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So these are some real big struggles that people are going on. So that's the real big struggle. Anything else? Any other troubles in your life? Let me give you a few, few things that maybe you know about. Okay? Uh, our friends can be nasty to us, not they, at school? Yeah? That's not very nice, is it? <coughs> or we might feel all alone and, and that no one cares for us. That can happen too, fine. Or we could have a, a medical condition that makes us feel so unwell all of the time. There's lots of people with, with medical conditions that make them feel tired and, and, and life struggles. Or we might, just, we might not just be as quick to learn as everyone else. We might be, take us a little while to learn things. And that can be a struggle as well, can't it? Uh, around us. There are all sorts of ways in which we struggle. But Jesus is the good shepherd who looks after those who trust him. So when we are feeling all alone, we're not alone because we can turn to Jesus. And we can ask him to be with us and help, and help us in the middle of that struggle. In, in fact, uh, in the uh, New Testament, uh, the Apostle Peter, so one who spent a long time with Jesus, he says that you know, when we struggle, we should be those that do this. Cast all your anxiety, all of your cares, on him, that's Jesus, because he cares for you. So we can tell Jesus all about our troubles and know that he'll help us. And whatever it is that we're going through in our life at the moment, whether it's a hard a difficult thing to do or not, then we can know that Jesus will help us. So, we help sheep lay down. He uh, looks for the lost, and he cares for those who struggle. The fourth one is this. He will be just. That's a strange sentence. Do you know what it is to be just? Good. Yeah, that's right. That was a good, that's a good answer. Okay, so to be just is to do things rightly. To do them in a right way. So have you ever felt that you've been treated unfairly? Yeah, I think mean, I've been treated unfairly sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes we can be treated unfairly, can't we? And there are all sorts of ways that we can be treated unfairly. People can be rude to us, they can steal from us, they can push in a queue, and they can hurt us in some way or another. And if we've ever been treated badly, it makes us both sad and angry, doesn't it? You know, we feel as though we feel hurt, and we also feel very cross that people have treated us like that. But with Jesus, we will be treated in a way that is right. There will be no injustice. And the picture that we have in the verse is the shepherd realizes that amongst the sheep, there are individual sheep that aren't very nice. In fact, they're bully sheep. And they're making everyone else's life a misery, and they're pushing the other sheep around. And the shepherd then removes them from the flock. He sends them. Well, we'd say to the butcher, they don't want no longer any trouble. Well, that's a bit weird. What does it all mean? Well, when we treat God or his people badly, we will be like those bully sheep. So, you know, we might say, well, laugh at people because they're a Christian, because they trust in Jesus. Well, that's a dangerous thing to do. It's a dangerous thing to do because Jesus has promised. Well, he's told us that as sheep, we have a choice. We either trust the shepherd and understand that his way is best, or we choose to do what we want, and we treat his people badly. And if we trust Jesus, we are safe. We have his protection, and we have his kindness. But you know, the Bible says if we do what we want, we will discover that our sin will be a failure. You see, Jesus will not have any stubborn, selfish people in his flock. Romans tells us that we need to be aware of this. It says, Romans, in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death. In other words, when I choose to do wrong, I earn an eternity without God. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when we trust in Jesus... He gives us the gift of eternal life. 
so that we will always be with him, and so that we will always know his blessing. So this morning then, I really want to ask you this question. Will you trust Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and know his face of kindness? Or will you reject Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and eventually face him, and his face, instead of being full of kindness, will be full of wrath or anger? Because we have rejected him and rejected his offer of salvation. It's a tough question, isn't it? Well, I trust Jesus for one time. So as you go away from here, I want you to think on that. And know that if you want to trust Jesus, then you're coming to the best shepherd that there is. He will look after you and he will help you all of your life and on into eternity. So let's pray, shall we? So, loving Heavenly Father, we ask that you help us to understand that we can trust you as the best shepherd, the good shepherd. And we thank you that we can know that our sins are forgiven as we trust in that saving work that you did on the cross. And we ask, Lord, that we might live with you in these days. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to sing a song which reminds us that um, God is holy. And if you come to a holy God, you need to come, well, with the holiness that he gives, the forgiveness that comes in Jesus. So let's stand and praise God as we sing, only a holy God.
received some surprises to give out, I understand. And so, does anything think you're all around each other? Just, just take them, okay? Okay, so um, I think we'll start with the youngest first. Now, do I give one of these to the youngsters? Or the youngest one as well? Okay, so. I think so. Is that right? Do I need to count them? Just to make sure. <laughs> no, not for the youngest one. Right, okay. Okay, so, Theo. What do I want the So, Kathy, would you like to come up and collect yours? Yeah? Can you shake my hand as well? <laughs> right, okay, so who we got next? We've got. Oh, Dean. Do we have a Dean with us? So, can you shake my hand as well? Okay, so uh, Levon is not here, so uh, there. Caleb. Thank you very much. Um, Corridor. Yeah. 